Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And I've been pretty busy moving this week so I haven't had a lot of time to do a big project so I thought I'd make another Pokemon card. And this is what I came up with. I'm so sorry. So far I've made a grass type, fire type, a water type, a psychic type, and a ghost type so it makes sense to make a ground type and what better choice than Diglett. Of course, making a hot dog with eyeballs would realistically take about 10 minutes and it would be a tad bit boring. Plus, I need to figure out a way to stretch this video to 10 minutes long to reap that sweet, sweet ad revenue. A little while ago I remember seeing this picture of Buff Doug Trio floating around and I thought, hey, now there's a terrible idea. Trio, 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 trio. Of course, this means that I need to make a super buff dude with a hot dog for a head. So I went on Google and found the buffest dude I could find and used that as a guide for my armature, which I then bulked out with aluminium and covered in a thin layer of cosplay. Basically, my buff dude will be the base for the card, which he'll be holding up and his diglet head will be chest bursting out the top of it. Then it's time to pack on some muscle. Now I've baked the first layer of cosplay already, which will give me a nice firm base to build on top of, and the subsequent layers of Super Sculpey will get attached using a thin coating of Bacon Bond. I'll add the largest muscle groups individually so that I can get a decent approximation of where each of the muscles will sit, and then I'll blend it all together until I've got a rough outline. I like to start with the legs and work my way up since I have a tendency to make huge upper bodies with itty bitty legs if I'm not paying attention. I don't know why though, maybe it's because I haven't done leg day in 12 years and I have a body type similar to a chicken, so I have a tendency to sculpt what I recognize. Otherwise, once the legs are done, I can start adding the rest of the muscles of the upper body. Now same as before, I'll start with the large bulbous shapes before blending them all together. Now once I've got my body as thick as I want, I can start refining some of the muscles by carving away the excess clay. It's kind of my preferred method since I find that I have a lot more control when removing material and I'm less likely to deform what's already in place. Generally, when you're adding clay, you have to press it into place and it's easy to smoosh your already lovingly crafted model, but when you're removing clay, you can approach it with a much softer touch. Besides, this ain't marble, so if you take too much off, just add it back in. Now once my ridiculously beefy dude is jacked up on horse steroids and HGH, I can smooth everything out with a heavy dosing of alcohol. Alcohol will help soften the top layer and by using a soft brush I can blend a lot of the sharper edges and seams into one another, which should leave me with a disturbingly smooth, headless handless Mr. Olympia. And I'm ready to add the head, and as far as sculpting heads goes, this is probably one of my favorites. Basically, you make a hot dog, cut it in half, and then attach it to the body. Now pay attention close here because this is where it gets pretty complicated. His nose is a little smooshed ball of clay, and his eyes are even smaller, smoosheder balls of clay. Now, I did have to reattach his nose because a little too low, but once it was put in place, that's, that's it. That's his whole head. That is, that is Diglett's head. Now of course I still managed to cock it up once it was been baked and I decided that I wanted the head as a separate part that will be attached on top of the card instead of bursting through it. Fortunately, a quick beheading will leave me with a lovely flat top to work off of. The card will be resting on the flat neck stub, but I want his hands to be holding up the edges so I need to make a couple little hands. Now, before I can add any detail to the hands, I need a card. This time I've made my cards slightly larger. They come in at about 3.5 inches instead of the standard 3, but this will help fit the body a little bit better. The general design is going to be the exact same though, with a few of the pieces glued together to thicken it up, and then the little details added on top to give a bit of dimension.
And I can use the card to angle the fingers so it looks like a horrifying version of Atlas holding up the world. Once I'm happy with the finger location, I can remove the card and start adding some of the detail onto the fingers. Finally, to really highlight the buffness of my diglet and to hit my tiny wormy dealy quota for the day, I'll add some strategically placed veins. Then the final piece of this weird puzzle is adding Diglett's bright red man panties. I feel like this is an integral part of the whole piece and really ties it together. Also, as an internet sculptor, I don't really get a lot of opportunities to say banana hammock out loud, so I'm damn well gonna say it now. Banana hammock. Banana hammock. Banana hammock. Now I added a little bit of height to Diglett's head since I wanted it to be a little bit taller and then I stuck a whole bunch of little balls to the base which will act as my tiny rocks. Now I suppose I could have used tiny rocks for this. Uh, but I didn't. Instead, I decided to make tiny balls of clay that look like little rocks. And then it's time to get painting, so I'll start by priming my body and head with a beige undercoat. Now, my first attempt at painting was to use some dark brown contrast paint, but about halfway through, I decided that I didn't like it and I rubbed it off. Instead, I painted the entire body with a nice brown earth, since I figured Diglett's a ground-type Pokemon, and what's more ground-type than earth brown? Then to add some highlights, I aggressively dry brushed the entire model with lighter shades of brown until I had a bit of a lazy man shading. Now I try to avoid adding too much shading on the Pokemon models since I like the vibrant individual colors of the Pokemon art style. But I also think we veered a tiny bit away from that with the inclusion of a super jacked man in a Speedo. His nails get painted with a light beige and that aforementioned Speedo gets a bright vibrant red that I think really draws the unwilling eye towards it. And then his nose gets painted pink and his eyes are simple black ovals with little white pupils. Finally, I can paint those little clay rocks gray and then hit them with a light dry brush to really highlight all the edges. Then I'll come back later with a little black wash just to add a last touch of shading. Otherwise, the only thing left to do is glue my card to my neck stump and then glue my head onto the card, making sure that the head is lined up with the neck. But with that, I'd say we are... On to the glamour shots. There you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you didn't, well, I understand. Otherwise, if you're not subscribed, now seems like a great time to do it. I make weekly videos, so if you liked this and want to see more, then hit that little notification button, and you'll know whenever another abomination is ready for your consumption. Of course, if you'd like to help out that little bit extra, then head on over to my Patreon and see if there isn't something there that tickles your fancy. Heck, you might even hear your name in next week's video, just like these wonderful people. Adriana Pershke, Alexander Bailey, Lord Skeletor, Liza S, Adam Grogan, Red Rivalry, and Carly Fleming. You are the over-muscled body holding up my tiny hot dog head. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>